Hello and welcome to Neurosurgery Written Board Crash Course. My name is Chen and we will be talking about the thalamus today. And this is part one of the video. There are many ways to organize the thalamus. And one of these ways is by its function. Now we all know that thalamus is a major relay station for the brain, for the cortex. And for the most part, it has a number of functions such as it relays all of the primary sensory informations such as somatosensory, taste, auditory, and visual information to the cortex, all except for olfactory informations. The thalamus will also sample information and relay it into the association cortex, which are basically secondary or tertiary sensory cortex that are involved in processing of the primary sensory information, uh, such as the vision and touch. The thalamus will also modify outgoing signals, such as uh, motor signals that go out and into the spinal cord. And also, it'll be involved in regulating and participating in relaying information in the limbic path pathway, and uh, therefore is involved in the emotional aspect as well. And there are other nonspecific projection nuclei, um, and we will talk about each of these in more detail. You can also organize the thalamic nuclei by their location. All of the nuclei are separated into big groups, and they're separated by a structure called the internal medullary lamina. That is a Y-shaped, right, splitting the thalamus into three major groups. In front of the Y, you get the anterior nuclear group groups. Medially, you get the medial nuclear group. And then more medial than the medial group, you get the median, the midline nuclei. And everything else that is out laterally is the lateral, is considered the lateral nuclei group. And then there is, at the posterior end of the thalamus, you get what is called the meta, met, metathalamus, which are basically just the medial and lateral geniculate bodies. In the midline, the structure that connects between the two thalamus is what we commonly known as the intrathalamic adhesion, or also known as massa intermedia. In the same vicinity, there is another nucleus, nuclear group called the paraventricular nucleus. This is a little bit lesser known and is a little bit confusing because this is the paraventricular nucleus of the thalamus. There is another nucleus in the hypothalamus called the paraventricular nucleus of the hypothalamus. They're identical in names, but they're in different locations. And we'll cover the other one in the hypothalamus video. There are also a couple of nucleus or nuclei within the internal medullary lamina. And to be precise, there are three of them listed here, the central median, the parafascicular nuclei, and the rostral in intralaminar group. And we'll cover those in future slides. The lateral nuclei can be further subdivided into two tiers, a dorsal tier and a lateral tier. Now, I, I typically would like to consider the lateral tier to be more of a ventral tier, just to reflect that the difference between the dorsal tier and the ventral tier. The dorsal tier has three nuclei, 
the lateral dorsal, the lateral posterior, and the pulvinar. And the ventral tier, or the lateral tier, has also three big groups of nuclei. Ventral anterior, ventral lateral, and ventral posterior. And the ventral posterior is divided, further divided into ventral posterior lateral and ventral posterior medial. The ventral intermediate isn't really all that important. If you cut the brain at the level of the thalamus coronally, you get this picture here. And if you focus just on the red box, you get something similar to this with the medial on this side and lateral on this side, superior and inferior with anterior and posterior coming in and out of the screen. The thalamus is right here and immediately covering outside of the thalamus is a layer called the external medullary lamina, which is to reflect that it's different from the internal medullary lamina. And just outside of the external medullary lamina, we have a nucleus called reticular nucleus that covers the bulk of the thalamus. And just outside of the reticular nucleus is the internal capsule. And so because of its location, the thalamic reticular nuclei forms a capsule around the thalamus laterally. And because of this, it covers the rest of the thalamic nuclei and samples the passing fibers and gates the activity of the thalamus, but it actually doesn't have any cortical projections. So now that we have a general idea of the big picture of the thalamus, let's go into each nucleus in detail. There are about two nuclear groups that are involved in the limbic or visceral functions. And there are the anterior group and the medial or the dorsal medial group. The anterior nuclear group is has many different subgroups and they're listed here, but they're not very important. So you don't really necessarily need to know them for the board exam. But recall that we've covered some of these input and output tracks in previous videos, in particular the mammillary body going to the anterior thalamic nucleus via the mammalothalamic tracks as part of the circuit of Pappies right about here and here. And you can refer back to the uh, limbic system overview video for more detail. We've also co covered the fornix also has a small po portion of fibers that conducts information between the subiculum and the anterior thalamic nucleus. And you can refer back to the hippocampus video for more information. The output tracks is mostly via the anterior limb of the internal capsule. It's, as the diagram shows over here, notice how close the relationship between the internal capsule and the thalamus. And in the anterior portion, as in the anterior thalamic nuclei, goes travels forward through the anterior thalamic radiation to the cingulate gyrus via the anterior limb of the internal capsule. The medial nuclear group has a few subnuclei as well, but by far the most important one is the medial dorsal nucleus. In this diagram here, the dorsal medial nucleus, which is the belongs to the medial nuclear group, sits in between 
the massa intermedia, which is the midline nuclear group, and the internal intralaminar or medullary lamina. The medial dorsal nucleus controls and is responsible for integrating visceral afferent information with emotion and memory. This part of the nucleus, the medial dorsal nucleus, has reciprocal tracks with the prefrontal cortex, which is the executive function of the, of the brain. It also conducts information in relation to the amygdala as well. And so you can imagine that the elision in this nucleus will create deficit in executive function, emotional changes, and also memory changes. There are two consequences from lesions involving the medial dorsal nucleus. The first one is uh, involves the actual damage to the medial dorsal nucleus, and it causes the Korsakoff psychosis that we know from the vitamin B1 deficiencies in alcoholics, which is the triad, the classical triad is the anterior grade amnesia and the retrograde amnesia together with confabulation. The other entity that affects the uh, medial dorsal nucleus indirectly is a procedure uh, that was popularized in the 1940s called the frontal lobectomy. And this was initially intended to remove tracts that uh, connected to the frontal lobes. The procedure will, was eventually popularized by Dr. Friedman uh, around that time in the 1940s. The lobectomy was basically involved uh, lifting the upper eyelid and placing a uh, point object, uh, more like an ice pick instrument called the uh, orbital clast, uh, and malleted it in to through the skull and drive it into the frontal lobe uh, numerous times, and essentially uh, transecting the white matter tracts that connects the prefrontal cortex to the thalamus. And um, because it, it didn't really require any drilling through the skull, it didn't require any operating room. Uh, and it doesn't even require a, a surgeon uh, per se. Eventually, this uh, procedure was, was basically turned into an outpatient office procedure. Um, and this procedure is used to treat uh, usually schizophrenia, but it, it also includes many other mental and physical conditions as well. And the quote that people usually say is that if the patient was agitated and violent before the operation and afterwards, uh, it seems as though his or her personality has been erased. And so basically you're uh, making the patient abulic and taking away the executive function. So now let's talk about the so-called nonspecific group. And these are more of the nuclear groups that have diffuse projection throughout the brain and has somewhat of a poorly defined function. The intralaminar nuclear group is located within the internal medullary lamina, as we talked about. There are three separate nuclei that are within this nuclear group, and namely central median, paraphysicular, and rostral intralaminar. The biggest function for this nuclear group is that they receive inputs from the reticular activating system, the RAS. The RAS is the system that controls wakefulness in, in, in the brain. And hence, the intralaminar nuclear group is basically the thalamic pacemaker for controlling wakefulness. 
and in particular the rostral intralaminar nuclear group or nucleus is responsible for it. And noticed that the other two nuclei, central median and paraphysicular, projects to other parts of the motor cortex. And I really don't have a better way to remember this um, and basically just memorize it as is and the, the, the projections and the connections because I, I did remember encountering questions regarding this topic on the board exam. The midline nuclei is located more medial than the dorsal medial nucleus. And namely, they are the massa intermedia, or also known as the interthalamic uh, adhesions, and the paraventricular nucleus. It's not very important to know the, the specific details of these nuclei, um, but just know that they are in the midline and that they are involved in more nonspecific projections to the cortex and within the limbic system. Now this is part one of the thalamic video and uh, we will cover the rest of the nuclear group, uh, mostly the lateral groups, uh, in the next video. And this, these are my references and I hope you find this helpful. We'll see you next time.